Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Water Horse. My name is Jerry Williams, and I'm here with Mr. Mike Inman, right here, and glad to have you. Thank you. I'm glad you uh, asked me back. I'm surprised you did that. Uh, you, You're glad for you, fun. No, sir. Mr. You do, you, you do, you do <laughs> a wonderful job. You Thank do a wonderful job there. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition, and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these world grand champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. I fell in love with Tennessee from the second that I saw it. From the beautiful rolling hills to the beautiful rivers and streams, the ecosystem and the wildlife are awesome here. But it needs constant care, and that means picking up litter and trash every single chance you get. It's totally polluting the ecosystem, totally polluting the natural resources, and it's a big hazard for our local wildlife. Please join NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and join me in keeping Tennessee beautiful and keeping this part of our great legacy. Folks, you're going to see this address throughout this show. This is where you send money to help in the legal fund to uh, combat the uh, new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. Keep in mind this is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as fast supports various things within our industry but every net thing needs to be isolated or specified for what it's for. The legal fund is a standalone thing, so if you want to contribute to that, this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. You'll be seeing this again. Please write it down and we'll talk some more as we go on through the show today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Water Horse. Um, I got Mr. Mike him in here, and he got some some good advice and some good things he gonna come on, and he gonna do some announcements. Yeah, first of all, I said, well, we're in, last time I was here, we were about to get in the show season. Yes, sir. Now, as I say, we be in it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we are in the show season, and uh, got three more shows uh, in the area here, or between here and Alabama, uh, through the the rest of this month. Yes. And I will say that the. Uh, show last week in Cornersville, uh, I was looking at the results, was as big as I've seen it yes. ever. Uh -huh. So that's a great thing, a great way to start off. But remind people, this Friday, uh, the Shelbyville Central High School Tennis Benefits yes. uh, 
this this show or this show benefits them, I should say, one of the many good charities that, that our shows support. And this one's going to be at the uh, uh, SW Beach Showgrounds over in Belfast. Everybody's familiar with yes. that. Uh, Allison Smith uh, is handling uh, uh, donations and sponsorships or information that you may have concerns uh, or want to contribute. Uh, call her at 931-607-2680. A start time is going to be at 5 o'clock, and I know they've done a lot of work to uh, kind of revitalize that, that uh, showgrounds there. Yes. It's really super good shape. And Dr. David Bullock is going to be the uh, judge for that show. That's a and good I look guy. forward to he him. He, he's a very knowledgeable yeah. horseman, and uh, uh, I, I know he'll do a fantastic job. Then the next night, if you want to do a two-nighter, Friday and a Saturday night, just skirt down the road to Coleman, Alabama. Um, in the Coleman Agricultural Center, and we used to live in Alabama and went to that show every year. It's a great indoor yes. facility, really nice, good size arena, plenty of room to work your horse. Uh, Greg's Johnston at 931-242-3957 is your contact person there. And Drew Graves from Shelbyville will be your judge. And that, that show also starts at 5 p.m. And then, of course, the uh, I would say the hallmark of May, yes. uh, one tried and true and special to my heart, is the uh, Celebration Spring Fun Show. And it's going to be held at Cooper Arena. As we know, it's a three-day event. Perfect way to do, do that uh, last weekend in May. Yes. The 23rd, 24th, 25th. Uh, start time every night at 6 o'clock. You will not be there at midnight. That's uh, that may not <laughs> that many classes. So uh, you can go back and... Uh, Catch plenty of nap or uh, a little uh, post-show uh, entertainment in town yes. with friends, going to uh, restaurants, etc. You c you can do that. Uh, you have three judges, so this will be a triple high point show. Uh, J Jamie Bradshaw, Mike Hilly, and Dickie Scrivener, uh, three top judges. I I'm sure it's going to be a great, great show. Uh, looking forward to everybody just to to really uh, blow it out and, yes. and make it a highly competitive one. Uh, that you're really starting to look at your uh, your contenders going a little bit of head to head. That's right. This is what we like. I always tell people you got to do that because if you if if you don't win and you get second or third or whatever, then the conversation starts. I can't wait to see Jerry Williams come back here. Can he win it again, yeah, or that's is somebody right. else going to sneak in and do it? That's when the conversation starts going. When our contenders start. Ever since out. I've been growing up, that fun show always been the. The set market of what you position that for the celebration and kind of give you that that front runner who you who is yeah. your competition that you got to go against and yeah. everything else. But I recommend anybody and everybody to bring a horse out there to the fun show and participate. That, that's going to be great. Uh, you see there one of my favorite things I like because it's spring, but it's enough to get in. You, you always want to see how the two year olds how they weathered. Yes. How, how they wintered. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see, oh, well, he was great. And then you're going to say, where did that one come, come from? That's right. You know, one that didn't really quite get out yep. there at the end of the two-year-old year or it was just a slower maker. Uh, and it, it just brings the excitement back and it changes the attitude. Plus, you got you got your four-year-olds first time out. Now that they're going to be cantering. Yeah. So you see how that, because that always changes up the dynamics a little bit, as you know, yeah. as a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that dynamic changes. And uh, you also see uh, those, uh, the two-year-olds on the amateur side that maybe a stallion. They thought, well, you know, I think he'll really excel as a gelding. That's yeah. that kind of my wife says. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a bad style, but I make a heck of a lot better <laughs> gelding. And you got the horses that's coming. Yeah. The two yo, you see more two yo amateurs that yeah. haven't shown none this year yet, and be yeah. show first they, time be showing. Right yeah, here. they're showing coming yeah. in, mm -hmm. or or a two year old open horse that has become an amateur. Yeah, and the amateur is right. taking it over. So okay. in different divisions, it's, yes. it's it's really an exciting show, and uh, let's do our best to make it a a uh, even over the top uh, of what it already you, is. You you exactly right. You exactly right. But um, now I think I guess you got some stuff that you want to talk about right here. Well, a, a couple of things. You know, we've got a lot of conversation, uh, and I would encourage everybody to do so if they haven't. Yes. Is look at the, uh, and not everybody gets the report. It's local. You're just going to get it in the mail this week. Yes. But uh, there's a great article, a very, uh, very informative article. The USDA has uh, announced their revised rulemaking. Yes. Uh, uh, that they plan to institute. They, there were some changes made uh, after the comment period, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But this is just a very informative article. 
uh, very factual. It's just a matter of fact of what, it, what the proposed rulemaking is, and, and it's to, to start in uh, February of next year, February yes, 1st. first. first. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, so read that because uh, there's a lot of, of angst, understandably so, going on, and, and confusion, and some misinformation. Yes. So, uh, but one thing that, that, that I've had uh, a lot of people talk about, because we have announced it, that we will be filing a uh, request for an injunction with the court. Now that we've seen it, and, well, and a lot of people are saying, "Well, okay, this was re released last week. You know, where where is our result? Yeah. Where, where 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 is our request for an injunction?" Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, keep in mind that I believe there was 15 points of change or new rules that the government was putting in that they announced in their pre preliminary release before the comment period. Yes. Well, now the comment period and, every, and everything has transpired. Uh, reviewed by Office of Management and Budget, and we'll talk about that too a little bit later. But uh, of those 15 points, five changed. So that is going to change our our response or our ask of the court. So we ask people be patient. We we have a tremendous, strong legal team, uh, Toradon uh, Law out of D.C. Well, they're reviewing. We we knew our response for the 15 as it was on the preliminary. Well, now five of those have moved out and five new things have gone in, so those five points have to be reviewed. Yes. Data has to be given, and uh, we have to to do that and do it right. Yes. And Because you only have one shot. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, that process is going on right now. How long will it take? Well, we want sooner than later, but if you're going to do it, do it right. Yes. And you're talking one third of it has changed. You're going to have to do some research, some data, and some formulating of your response. Uh huh. So uh, you'll be getting an update on that too. But it will take a little bit of time, a reasonable amount of time, to do it right. Now, so what can we do as owners, as trainers, as business owners in that is related? to the walking horse industry or touched by the walking horse industry. Yeah. Your, your restaurant or your hotel may not mm -hmm. be exactly, but you're touched. Oh yeah, you're so, right. So what can we do, since we're not attorneys, although a lot of us think we're gonna be attorneys. Yeah. Because <laughs> we watch law, because <laughs> we watch, watch well, law and order. Yeah. But what we can do to not only make sure we make a proper response, but we keep the time frame going so we can get that response done timely. And the additional things we need is we need financial support. Yeah, you're and, right. And that's that fast thing that we popped up and we'll be seeing it again. Yeah. Everybody can do that. And when you're gonna do it, you wanna do it right, we need your support. Boy, that's that's right. the, if you wanna make sure we don't slow down or we don't back up or we don't weaken, support. That's right, you are so, right. So I, send, send that check to FAST. Uh, you know, there's contrib. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, there's contributions from fifty to five hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, not not having been a single file. Fifty to fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Fifty dollars to fifty thousand. Yeah. All those are coming in. Send them to FAST. Be sure you put on that memo line legal, legal fund, fund or yeah. just legal, uh, because that way it goes specifically to that. Because that's another question. Yeah. How do I know where it's going? You specify legal fund. That's where it's, it's going. It's a specific yeah. account that has been used over the years, it's been over a million dollars that we've spent. That's right. So we're used to that, straight up, there's nobody at FAST, there, there, there are office, there's officers, but they're not paid. Yeah. I mean, the, the super majority of your money goes directly to this nonprofit. And, and so we encourage you to, to do that part. But I mean, I tell you, it's, I say everybody needs help because I mean, it gonna hurt It'll hurt the city, the surrounding towns around here too. I mean, Tallahoma, Murfreesboro, mm -hmm. you know, all them places like that. I mean, this walking horse industry brings a lot to this to this community right here. Oh, it really does. I know that we've been seeing some great uh, pictures of businesses that are touched. Yes, uh, and it's everything. It's it's even beyond that. It's it's uh, a real estate. The general real estate. That's right. So many people have second homes here, and, and I know I had a second home here for. Oh, 15 years before we moved here full time, and I'm a lot of us just at the end. We want to move here 
and, and retire because is where our friends yes. go, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and my lousy golf game <laughs> are, are, are both here. But as what the city and the surrounding area, property taxes from that, most people are, are coming in and out. They're not here a long time, but yes. they still contribute. <clears throat> the property taxes, the city taxes for the schools, yeah. the roads, so all that. People just are coming in. They're not here full time, but they're contributing. They contribute. They're you exactly and, right. And the real estate market is, is a big part of it. Uh, our schools, everything goes goes uh, in into uh, yeah. to that. So uh, uh, do your part and let our attorneys and our leadership do their part, and we're gonna win this. Oh yeah. I believe, you know, it's a lot of people that comes in this place that came in, you know, and moved here because of this horse. That's Absolutely. one reason I'm here, you know, because Absolutely. of the simple fact, you know, I was born and raised in Louisiana, and mm -hmm. I, that was my goal to move here to Chevyville because of this horse and food with this Tennessee walking horse. Absolutely. You know. And uh, you're one of many, and we're glad to have you. There again is the, uh, uh, the address to send your money to. Uh, again, it is tax deductible. It's a 501c3. You'll be getting a letter that you can give to your accountant. Yes. So you, 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 if, if you choose to do that, when you file your tax returns, uh, again, in any amount is great. Yes. And, and uh, PO Box 259 Shelbyville, and then put in the memo line, legal. And a lot of people don't realize this, Mike. This affects everyone. It does. Everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone that is like to ride their horse, this at their house or whatever it is. I mean, it is you know, mm -hmm. it, it affects. And you know, in these horses here, you know, <clears throat> the Tennessee walking horse ain't just about the performance because I mean, but that's the main thing is the performance part yes. of it. But you can trail ride these horses. I mean, like you see here, people get these Tennessee walking horses and they go out and they trail ride mm -hmm. and they have fun. And everything and relax, yes. you know, enjoy themselves. Uh, oh, absolutely, yes. It's uh, no doubt the padded performance horse isn't the only part. Of it is the economic driver, driver. Yeah, I mean, right. to be honest, but it is just a segment of it. But I tell you, when I when I trail rode, that's when I, that's how I started. Yes. Like so mm -hmm. many amateurs. Well, I was in Texas. We started yeah. trail riding. I didn't know what a horse show was, but I knew. After I had that first quarter horse and I rode a walking horse, I knew what I wanted. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and then it all progresses. But I tell you what, it was always when I was uh, doing my trail, what was the first question you had, or, or the first thing you would say was, man, that's a pretty horse. horse I really love right. that thing. Who's he by? That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you exactly right. And, and you it exactly always tied right. back, well, I've got four world, world champions, champions in my papers. papers. Yeah, you, you know, exactly and, and right. that's it, that, because that's the diversity of the horse. Uh, from the, the show rail <coughs> yeah. to the trail, right? That's right. Is that what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know. I mean, my this is my life. I mean, this all I this all I know. And I catch myself at night. Last night I was up to twelve, the one o'clock, watching the entry of the celebration, the last state class, as they call the horses one by one oh. coming in the ring. And I mean, that's exciting. This on its own. I was watching back. From 1980, yesterday they had Mount Man and all uh, of them was coming in. They was called horse one by one. And then you go remembering what trainer still out there, strength, still showing that was showing back in the 80s. You know, and some of the bloodlines that was that way. I mean, it just you know it's exciting. Oh yeah, that's, watch. That's goosebump time. That's right. It's, yeah. It is. Well, let me ask you because you've been in it for so long. Yes. You've been at 40 mm -hmm. years. Well, yeah. you've been mm -hmm. longer since you were four yeah. years old, mm -hmm. baby. I'm yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt when I met him, <laughs> but. You've been training full time since. I've been training full time for about forty years. Now. Okay. Uh -huh. What? Are, there's many things, but what were the predominant sires, say, twenty-five years ago? What are the predominant sires now, and what are the changes in that in that horse? Well, the the um that is a. Back in the days, you know, you had gold coin and generator and all that stuff there. And you know them horses. Done. But now you got Jose. Mm -hmm. I am Jose. Justified on is a new one that's coming up, you mm -hmm. know. But I mean, it had changed a whole bunch. Sure. I mean, it, and you got a lot, and you got a lot better horses now. Mm -hmm. To me, I think. So you think just a little more athletic? Yeah, a little, little bit more athletic and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But um, we'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. Okay. But
Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Where does your donation to the Humane Society of the United States really go? Their CEO makes more than $450,000. Their top execs make more than $200,000 each. The Humane Society of the United States isn't even affiliated with any local humane societies and only gives about 1% of the money it raises to local pet shelters. So if you want to help homeless pets, give to local shelters. Learn more at humanewatch.org. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee Walkenhorst, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. There again, there's your reminder, folks. Please, please do your part. I know you want to. Everybody has a lot of invested, have assets, either in horses they own or investments in your friend and your, your quality of life related to this horse. P.O. Box 259, please put on that memo line legal so we can earmark your funds to what we need to do. And that's win. Welcome back to this edition of Water Horse. See, you, you messed up CJ. He was so engrossed in what you were going to say about the generational changes. Yeah. Horses, he forgot to go to the commercial. That's right. Hey, <laughs> you had him going. <laughs> I tell you, it, it is. You know, you talk about the um, about the generation of different horses, but I mean, the horses, I mean, they they turn, I guess it's about like football players. Mm -hmm. As the years went on, the better and better athletic horse that you got to the day. Yes, it is. It, it's it's amazing. I'm a... Uh, just simply amazed what this horse. And I tell you one thing that I really noticed too, is the refinement of our horse. Yes. The beauty. Yeah. The beauty. Uh, that horse, you know, used to be pretty stocky. Yeah. You know, big Roman nose. Uh -huh. or he wasn't, well, that's how you knew he was a walking horse. horse. Yeah, exactly right. Now they're so fine, refined. They're a prettier horse. Yes. Now there's where it all started. Yes. Right there. Great horses, plenty of stories, and that again, they're, they're still in gym. He, he's everybody associate. That's War Trace. Yes, that's, that's not right. Shelbyville. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole area, area. Mm -hmm. um, of Middle Tennessee and beyond, really. But it's uh, it's I, amazing. I can remember as a kid and playing horse, mm -hmm. you know, and calling out stuff and you know you pick out that world champion in that person time and that's the horse that Joe Horses was named yeah at, absolutely at the house was that you know was that world champion mm -hmm. or whatever you know I, I tell you we used to have every kid in the neighborhood didn't know nothing about a walking horse but they used to watch us and listen to us and they'll start naming these horses mm -hmm. off and they ain't never seen a day in their life <laughs> because true. they used to you know well and, listen and, to us do it right and today ask a kid in the stick in the stick horse class yeah. The name is Horse. horse. And, <laughs> and listen to the name that they come yeah, they up with. They name it to a world champion. Yeah, but it's part of, part of the life. Maybe you're having a match piece. Remember, when I first got in, he was a premier stallion, breed yes. stallion. And uh, uh, he was the first one I remember. Yes. A lot. Like but, I mean, you can just see the difference in between them horses where it started at and where it's at to the day. But, and, and like you said, even in five years. I mean, you got generational horses. Yeah, people, that's right. People say, you know, they ask, well, is, you know, honestly, they asked me if he, because one time we owned it, is he the best one? He, I said, he's the best 
perhaps of his generation. That's but right. Because <laughs> there's generational horses. You know, Ritz was a generational horse. Yes, that's right. I mean, his masterpiece was a generational horse. And that's what's, it's, it's kind of like to compare basketball, say, is LeBron James the GOAT, yeah. or is it Michael Jordan yeah. the GOAT? No, or, that's right. Or, or, or is it Bill Russell, Russell or is it yeah. Jerry West? Uh -huh. you know, it's, it's all generational. All generational. You, but you it's all exactly great right. entertainment and amazing athletic no, ability. You, you are exactly right on that. So that's, you, you are exactly that's really good. Uh, and you know one thing about these horses here, you know, we got the, the classic class that we have. Yes. And these horses that's showing now that's 15, 16, 20 years old, that's still showing. Amazing. And they've been showing, you know, uh, yeah, here, here's the class of 15 yeah. years old. And, old, and, and they've been showing their entire lives, and we mean by 18 months old. Oh, that's right. The talented ones. And no breed has that. That's right. No breed. I mean, and not, not to make a knock on any breed. There's they're great horses, and they're, but the longevity of the horse, this this animated, timed up athlete, it's amazing. And I'm looking this year at horses that are 14, and this class is just getting bigger. Bigger. It's, getting, it's bigger because it used to be okay. You know, they maybe have seven or eight, and they all be great multi world yeah. uh -huh. champions. I mean, there, there's no slot now. It's double digits, and they're starting. It used to be only the celebration would have this class. That's right. Now I know the fun show has it. And, yeah. And uh, I believe the fast show had it earlier. But, but now it's we're getting so many of them. It's become instead of just a one-off class. Yeah. To to uh, highlight these horses, it's you know several times a year <laughs> just for fifteen and over. over it's horses. incredible. And I tell you, these horses enjoy showing. Oh. You know, I got that Texas Joe Black. Yes. That's at the boy now. And I think he's 20, 20 mm -hmm. plus or whatever. And I mean, he just, if you look at him in that stall, he's act like he's a three-year-old. I yes. mean, he runs that stall. Every time I bring a horse out there to pass him, to go out there to ride one out in the ring, I mean, he's like sticking his head out like, it's my turn, it's my turn, it's my turn. You know? I, I believe I mean, he, 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 he was great, Ronald. And geared up, I yeah. know, at 15 years old, amateur guy, he, you got your hands that's, full that's just right. getting mm -hmm. on him. And he loved it, but he was just so geared up, I wanna go, I wanna, I wanna go, go. Yeah. I wanna go. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, a great testimony to him. Uh, and he uh, was <laughs> my many stories, Kathy's eyes on him forever. Yeah. And I remember shows when he was still 12 and 13, the trainer tried to get on him to warm up, and he'd be bucking around and running around. And he just, he'd calm him down. And, but when Kathy, came, he'd stand perfectly still. Yeah. He knew mom was getting ready to get on him. And you know, you, you know, take these horses, another thing about these horses too, you catch a lot of these other breed of horses, you know, they all kind of broken down the legs and stuff like that. But these, now I'm gonna tell you, these Tennessee walking horses, I mean, at 20, 22, 23 years old, I mean, they still get around just like they three or four years old. Yeah, and, you know? and, and that goes to our, our rulemaking where the government's trying to take our pads away. But if you have a horse that's injured, no matter what your breed, they'll, they'll uh, your veterinarian will encourage you or prescribe that you put him on pads. Yeah, that's therapy. right. That's part of it because we're taking care of them the whole life. You know, we're, yeah. we're giving them something that's good for them. It's part of the part of uh, our regular training method. You and that, you're right. that's a that's an attribute that adds to their longevity. You know, I got that San Quentin horse out there for Doctor yes. Ray. Yes, out there. Great, I mean, great he, out of parole horse. I mean, we turn him loose, Magic Pier Ritz. You know what I mean, we, he got them runs that they run in. I mean, you look at them. And I mean, you. A lot of people come and they ain't never seen them horses. They will ask, "How old is he?" And you know, you tell them, "Hey, he's 19. He's 20." No way. They say, "No, old, man." No, he, <laughs> he that old. They see him running back and forth up and down that pen there. You know, they are. They are? Yeah, it's amazing. Talented, talented, great horses, and uh, that's that's a special class for us. And you, don't want, you, want to and you know, team. another thing that you can do is the racing with these Tennessee walking horses. And we, you know, we done that a little bit. At one time four, we done the racing. And you know, it's just like this. I ain't gonna say these Tennessee walking horses is as fast as a thoroughbred, but one walking horse is outrunning the other walking horse. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, and that's, and I mean, all of them is registered Tennessee walking horses is right there that's running. Mm -hmm. That's out there. And I mean, we had a, we had a blast Absolutely. doing that. Absolutely. It's amazing what this animal can do, uh, the competitive nature, and, and then, you could take them down. I bet you could go up trail riding with this horse when you're done. But that, it, that is, I love, love when y'all did that. Yeah. That was, that was. You know. I know that guy there, I think. Yeah. 
Uh, but I mean, but that's but now you take these horses like that. The horse that you seen the girl was riding, that mare there was old brood. That mare that we caught out of the field that was 19 years old. No, and we took right. out there and run, and she outrun the rest. A lot of them other horses out there. This horse right here was up at the age right here. Now I mean, he was a nice horse. That's amazing, holding that tail out there proud. Look at that. It's a. Uh, the versatility I mean, of all the horses. And of course, that goes to, just shows you things other than the show ring, what our horses can do, uh, which is a plus. The versatility of our horse, nothing else. I, I used to, when we first got in it in Texas, uh, we were keeping our horses uh, self care at the barn, you know, my, yeah. my trail horse. And there was a uh, thoroughbred horse that off the track he'd gotten injured. Uh, and Lady had him, he was sound at that time. Yeah. But you, could you control him? No. I mean, he was just going to, that's all he wanted to do was run, run, run. 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 I mean, you, 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 that's all he wanted to do, uh, where these horses, I'm sure, could run, 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 run against, that, against fellow well, walking horses. That's the horse that was competitive. in that video right there, the last horse, was a standard bred. Wow. Half quarter, half thoroughbred, half standard bred, and you seen the mother walking horse who was out in front of him beating him yep. out there. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, it's a lot of different things that you can do with these horses, yeah. where these other breeds can't do. Yeah. Where, you know, you can take, you know, a thoroughbred quarter horse or whatever, and yeah, in that quality of cutting cows, running, yeah, they might be fast, but the one thing a Tennessee walking horse can do that they can't do, they can come back to that gate mm -hmm. and be just as smooth. You can't bring that gate no. to a thoroughbred or quarter horse. Well, that's one thing people say, oh, it's a man-man gate. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's born and raised. <laughs> no, it's not. It's born. Yeah, that, you can get all sorts of conversations, yeah. lateral gate versus diagonal gate and all that, but it's that. God yes. gave him that game, mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes the horse special. And, but, uh, it's, certainly, but I tell you, I like any kind of good horse. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm not just putting that on any other breed of horse. No, absolutely. You no, no, I, like, I, I like any horse that does his job well. Yes, absolutely. I don't care what he is. If he does his job well, I don't care what kind of breed of horse, I like it. I agree. But I just think that the, the Tennessee walking horse part of it and the performance horse of it, it brings the, the crowd and excitement to it. Well, that's one thing that we can see is uh, that I tell people um, that sets us apart as some of the other breeds, uh, like, like a thoroughbred. A thoroughbred is a beautiful, magnificent animal. Yes. But an owner is not going to ride that horse. That's right. Nope. And, and where our horse, uh, he can do this, this proud, exuberant gait and really competitive and strong like you can't believe. But if you're seven years old or 97 years old, you can ride it. Yes, you're exactly right. We got some videos, some victory passes we're going to do right here. Yes. Allie Joe. Yeah, and Cole Hanna, great. If I remember correctly, he's by Game World, if I remember correctly, and has been a great horse all his life. And he's got to be dumb. Yes, yep. But now, that's again what we was talking about earlier. That little girl maybe weighed 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 60 pounds, something yeah. like that. In a wet and riding suit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah. And, you know, that's on that horse right there, that's over a good thousand, eleven hundred pounds. Yes. Yes. And you know he's got plenty of a motor and want to and desire, and, and, or he wouldn't be doing what he's doing, but he, but he knows how to do it under control. Yep. Um, Tom and Derrickson, I'm going to tell you, he's another young trainer that's coming up that's doing yes. real well. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be, what, third generation? Yes. Third. Mm -hmm. And ladies' prayer, I think that's just, yeah, three. Yeah, three-year-old yep. man. There is, if you can read, you can see it. There it is. And so you, there, there you see a three-year-old and a, and a horse that was double digit. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and Thomas, you know, just like his dad and his granddad and all that stuff, I mean, I would like to see him have the privilege of growing up and doing the same thing like his, you know, yes. like his granddad and his dad does, he's training these horses. Absolutely. That's, that's what, uh, this, this horse right here, Mr. Robert Dorch, he always have a bunch of good horses. Yes, he does. And this, this has been a good, very good horse. I, and you talked about mayor, that, that mayor's produced uh, several world champions. It's a great mayor. And he's out of, and, and people uh, sometimes don't give credit to the mayor that the mayor deserves because they're yeah. an integral, important part of it, if not the most important part. The mayor is, is 
to me, is 75, 85 percent of the of the yeah, horse, really, yeah. truly. Yeah, she got to be a producer. Yeah, yeah. If she can produce a show horse, you stick, you hang on to her. Yeah, that's right. But the beauty is, and if they don't produce, at least they produce a good horse. A good horse, that's right. Sorrow Jr. Yeah, and they say 50 and over. That's for the amateur, not the horse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think we ought to. Uh, I may have had to check Bess. Uh, uh, ID. That's and, right. Um, I mm -hmm. want to make sure she qualifies for this class. Might have to get a veterinarian to mouth of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that Bev does a real good job on that horse right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Walking and shaking the yeah. way one's supposed to. A lot of motion, a lot of head shake. I am big enough at Maxine Then his horse right here is, a, I'm going to tell you, he's he's a real nice horse. I mean, he's like a, a sewing machine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every time you see him, he's going to be doing the same, same gear yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's been a great one. And appropriately named. Yeah. It's appropriately named. It's, uh, they always tell me, a judge always tell me, if you get confused on picking a horse, you close your eyes and open your eyes, and that horse that you want to win is going to stand out. Mm -hmm. And that's one of them horses that you can open your eyes, he's going to be oh, doing yeah, the same he, thing. He's doing everything, both yes. ends and shaking and everything yeah. in time yeah. and under control. Love to see him. Well, obviously, that's a pretty windy night. Yes. <laughs> it was a windy, windy night. Enjoyed that show. That was good. That was a good show. Them girls doing a good job. You know, we're looking at all these horses here and, and these great amateurs. And, and I, I was talking to Mr. Mark Ferrer over at the yeah. uh, Breeders uh, a couple of days ago. And, and this year we've gone back to the amateur card and the horse uh -huh. card. And uh, uh, this is a vital thing. And everybody is also a contribution. You know, he told me that this uh, initiative, bringing the amateur card back and the horse card back, has, uh, at the end of this month, they will have raised over $220,000 mm. for the legal, that, for the legal fund. Yes. Uh, that, so everybody, again, there's, there's a show where, uh, you know, $100, $100 uh, yes. we, it can add up to significant. It can. And, yeah. uh, and not every uh, section of the breed, not all HIOs, are contributing, and you're getting that out of out, out of uh, a group that can grow and get even more. more you, but, but, you're right. Uh, those are the kind of efforts you never underestimate. The many different ways we can we can do things to to work on this effort. And of course, uh, that's if you're an uh, owner, uh, not necessarily an exhibitor, but an owner of a horse or, or, or uh, uh, an exhibitor, either one. But uh, you know, we can do it in various ways. Oh, and yes. I, I found that incredible because people wonder, well, how much is that going to do? Well, as a group, we can do a lot. A lot. You're okay. right. You're right. This title of the fence horse is a real good horse here, too. Yes. Virginia Stewart, she's, I tell you, she's been a big help to this business, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and indicative of a person from Louisiana. Yeah. Moved uh -huh. up here. To, That's right. Because to, to, she loved these horses. And got a real nice form out there oh, off 231, beautiful. big house. Beautiful, beautiful. And and you'll know which one it is. It's the one with about 40 beer mares out in the back. That's right. When it going by on That's what you call you brought. She brought Louisiana to Tennessee. Yes, she with did. With the house and all that stuff. Yeah. She built that house. And uh, and uh, Jean, <coughs> her husband, makes some, some pretty uh, wicked gumbo and red yeah. beans and mm -hmm. rice if you've ever had the chance. <laughs> it's fantastic. But you just look at all like Dan on his Wilhelm. That was a good horse right there. That, mm -hmm. I think that was Buddy Wilhelm's last coat that he raised. Oh, that's great. And you talk about a great man and a knowledgeable horseman yeah. and breeder. Uh, well, I didn't know that was his last yeah. horse. Well, he, he, you know, he raised many, many, good, many good ones. Good ones. That's and right. this one certainly qualifies for that. That's fantastic. But you just look what this horse done. You know, that's like Dan. Mm -hmm. There's another person that moved here. Mm -hmm. The middle of Tennessee, the Chevyville, because of this horse. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people that you see. Mm -hmm. Yes, that you see exhibit like this. Now that's a good horse right there. Yes, he, he's a great horse, and here you are, uh, Megan Hammond, uh, third generation. Yeah, uh, they're from Ohio. Her, her father and grandfather from Ohio. Yeah, now moved down here, here. but uh, it's been in their family 
forever. Her father, Mike, tells me stories about when he was a kid, come to celebration, he'd sleep in the stall. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's it's been part of the family. That's one thing. You, you, you got a daughter and a father. And a son and a father can find tons of things, things to do. That's right. Uh -huh. It's hard for a father and a daughter to find, find things, things to, do. to do together. But showing horses is certainly one of them. That's like um, the watch. That's a good man at Jennifer for debt. Yeah, yeah. He he was uh, top one of the four year old class, if I remember correctly, four year old stallion class, gone to be a breeding horse. Yeah. And there's trainers and owners uh, from Mississippi. That's right. That comes up here and show and you mm -hmm. know, like you're saying, and support things. Yes. You know this walking horse business is is like a big family. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And I mean. All genders, all colors, all everything comes together, and at the end of the day, you come to be a big family. Yeah, that's why I say I, I always I use the, the, the phrase that uh, the horse is what keeps uh, brings us together, but it's the people that keep us together. together that's right. And that's it. Um, oh well, here's, here's uh, an owner here from Pennsylvania. Yeah, uh, Bob Hadcock, and they have a second house up here now, and they plan to retire here yeah. soon. Uh, Bob and Deb, and uh, they're great folks, and they're they're in it because they're, they're second generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob's uh, father uh, was a trainer yeah. in Pennsylvania, a flat shot trainer. You know, you think like Bill Calloway right there. I mm -hmm. mean, his dad is a horse trainer, come moved in from Georgia. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, and again, we all we all call that keeping Tennessee green. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> And Shane Porterfield, I mean, he's that's a nice horse right there, Joe Paul. Yes. That's a real nice horse there. He's been a good one. He has been a good one. Yep. Tanner is another young trainer that's coming up that's doing real well in this horse mm -hmm. industry. Second generation yep. trainer. Mm -hmm. And him and his brother both. Yes. You know, back to this, this rule making, there's been one thing that uh, it has been a little confusion uh, people are talking about that in June the uh, USDA will be taking over the HIOs, the RHOs. That is not accurate. Yes. What the, the USDA is doing will be starting to recruit and hire and train people for HIO that they're wanting to take over, but that taking over or implementing their HIO wouldn't uh, coincide with the time of the rulemaking if if it goes through yes which would be February of 2025 right. so there's confusion and, and a little bit of angst there but uh, I want to make sure to clarify that that, that the, the uh, HIOs will still be functioning and nothing will change uh, during the course of this, this show season and that is just a rumor that's getting around but I refer you back to that article yes. that's in report. Uh -huh. it, it states where it is and if you just read that paragraph That'll make sense, but uh, uh, that's a question I'm hearing a lot of. And, I'm, and I'm so glad you educating a lot of people on this. Well, it's and stuff like that, and getting the facts out and letting people know what's going on. Well, you know how things are, you know, yeah. rumors go yeah. and as it gets repeated. And again, it's a, it's a nervous, trying time. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, but just wanted to clarify that. This horse right here. I think he should be close to double digits almost. Yes, he he I mean, is, he's yeah, been around he for a good time. Right, yeah. He is right there on the edge. Yeah. And this horse here almost every weekend or every other weekend you gonna see him in the show ring. Yes. Mm-hmm. And motored up bugger. Oh Lord, he's motored up. <laughs> he is he uh, he loves his deal. He he uh, uh I don't think he'll ever slow down. He's just one of those personalities, just a competitor that loves to go. And you're right, I think he's He's all of 10, if not yeah. a little north of that. You know, um, the thing of it too, about these horses, these breeds right here, I have seen this horse show at a horse show and you have three different nights or four different nights of show and, and he showed three out of the four nights, and, back to back. Yes, and, and you, being at the top. And being at the top, but you see how many other breed of horses that show back to back like that? Hey, I'm having show. a hard time going to three shows That's in, in, in a row. <laughs> I'm staying awake and I don't do anything but watch. That's right. <laughs> but it's amazing. And again, it's uh, these are top, top athletes in top, top shape. 
because it's not easy to do. It's natural what they do. Yeah. It's easy for them relatively, but they're exerting a ton of effort. And Billy, I, it's, it's a, it, I'm always amazed. Yes. Simply amazed. This is a nice horse right here, too. Mm -hmm. Tommy Mills and them, they do a lot for this industry. Yes. Too. Well, there's uh, that rider there is going to be your judge, judge yeah. uh -huh. on uh, Saturday night. Drew does a good job. I mean, he's very good. He has some top horses. Yeah. Great facility out there at uh, uh, Cheryl Crawford's farm. Uh-huh. And he's got two sons. Yes. That work with him. So there's another another example of multi-generation. Uh, once you stay, you get in this breed, you just you stay hooked. This, you're exactly and right. I, I tell people, for me and my wife, we got in it, and it's it's uh, like a 12-step program. Yeah. Or there is no 12-step program for this. Once you're in, you just you just love it so much, it's it, it becomes part of your blood. You are you are right about that. You are exactly right. This horse business is. It's something else. It is. It's something else. It is. And it's, it's one of those things you can again stay with, get when, when you're young and stay with it your entire life. Yes, sir. And, and never never lose yes. the desire for it. Well, we're going to take a short break for a commercial. <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also, remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Here you go again. I hate to remind you, but if you're anything like me, you might need reminding. Uh, please contribute. Do your part. Uh, if you've done before, please, please uh, do it again. It, it's so valuable. It's so important. Uh, and it is, remember, tax deductible. And any amount is welcome. Every amount is needed. Please put legal on your memo line and uh, I know the folks at FAST will get you back your uh, 501c3 uh, certificate because it's tax deductible if you choose to, but they can't think of a better, more direct way to help support this horse. More of What a Horse coming up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Water Horse. And like I said, I have Mr. Mike Emmett with some very important knowledge that he's been giving us and stuff like that. And I mean, I'm very appreciative of it. Well, we're, we're, we, we love it. We're just happy to be here and be a part of it yes, any way we can. And yes, it's, sir. It's, uh, um, and, and what a beautiful facility. This was the Upper Cumberland Horse Show. The Lemon and Thunder winner. Our second generation there, uh, Ali Joe Jacobs, second generation of Jacobs family. In, and that is a big mare. You talk about yes. what is, I remember she's, gosh, I think she's only four, maybe five, but big, huge, beautiful bay mare. Uh, I sang Dixie. And she's going to be one that we're, that we're going to be looking at that mare for another 10 yes. years. Yes, uh-huh. Because uh, I remember when she started out, she was kind of loosey-goosey going to get it, but she's starting to come in and, and really develop. 
<laughs> this is the four-year-old class. Yes. They had a real good show here at this show. That's a nice place to show. Mr. Mm -hmm. okay. That looks like Sam Sorrel Sam there. Sam Sorrel, yep. Great horse. And Sam's a great trainer. By the way, he has just been uh, announced as the trainer for the Bedford Cancer Show. Okay. Bedford County Cancer Show, uh, I think it's June 8th, if I'm correct. The, the Tweeb is going to have a show on the 7th. That's on the 8th. Back-to-back uh, -back shows. And we talk about contributing to the industry or, or things affected. Here, that's, that's a charity that yes. benefits from a horse show every year. All the money stays in Bedford County. And uh, I talked to Miss uh, Connie Allen, who's president yeah. of, of their association. My wife serves on the board as well, along with a lot of other great ladies. And they've contributed over half a million dollars okay. to people in cancer. And I tell you, I hear the stories of the people. They're saying they're on a really top horse. I have to find out where you got that name from. Mm -hmm. The name Java? Java. Jive. Jive. I have to find out. Jive, what, well, yeah. Jive SS. I wanted yeah. the SS is Sam Sorrell. <laughs> but uh, I have to ask him about yeah, that. Yeah, how you come up with that name there. But it's, uh, again, just another example of the people and how they serve him right away. He's from Kentucky. Yes. Comes up here to show here. He's going to be uh, judging a show. And like I said, he's a premier judge. In the yeah, industry. he's he's a good person now, yeah. judging now. He's, uh, uh, just that show is, uh, like I said, it's contributed over half a million dollars to the Bedford County uh, directly to help families in the well, it's that, a nice arena. It is it's a nice a arena. Beautiful, nice arena. I want to thank Bob Roach for the videos that he sent yeah. us and stuff like that. And talk about a man that contributes to the industry. Uh, Bob Roach and his lovely wife. Yeah. Uh, just doing these at a very reasonable subscription. And I tell you, it helps so many of us that can't get everywhere yeah. for a variety of reasons. To be a part, still part of the horse, and, and I tell you, it's it's important. I say, if you can't go to the show on a Saturday night, I just I know I say, well, I'm gonna stay home yeah. or I'm gonna go out for dinner and then I'm gonna watch the show. show. Yeah, yeah that's it right. means it's it means so much. It does. We want to just Sam done a real good job right there. Yeah, he's had his horse since he was two. He's been yeah. top top horse. This is the amateur three year old here. Mm -hmm. This is. A Mr. Bob Roach. Oh, speaking of the devil, there's Bob yep. Roach. And uh, uh, on Beach Bum Bruce, now that's a a top horse uh, by Bruce Pearl. By Bruce Pearl out of Limestone Lucy. Oh, oh right, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a mare. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, you bring, that bring a good style to a good proven mare. Yeah. <clears throat> Bob bought this, purchased this horse from one of them coat previews that they had down there in Alabama down there, and he bought it and they took it up. And I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. and Brett Grider has done a great job with yeah. him. And he walks just like his daddy, long walking back in, head shaking, timed up. Impressive animal. And again, can't thank Bob and his family, his brother, for all they do. And a lot of people don't know, he's, he's a sneaky good golfer. <laughs> he's a pretty good golfer. But I look forward to his videos all the time. Yes. And, and I look at him during the week, just catching classes. If I go, can't make it to a show, or even if I did, just get a replay. Play, yeah, that's right. And that's Walking Club, Kentucky, I think, so never hits. And here's one that he's, he was good when he was two, and he's gotten better, better every year. Yes, and right. he's one too. You can tell this. We're going to be looking at this horse uh, for a long, long time. Hopefully, we're looking at Bob too. Yes, but mm -hmm. uh, that's very, a very nice good horse. horse right there. Yes. Has another one. That horse's mom is right at twenty-something years old. I mean, she runners around the, ah. at the barn there, and still having babies and stuff oh. like that. Now you have a lot of retired horses at yes. your barn, mm -hmm. don't yes. you? Mm -hmm. And that's a great service that you offer because there's a lot of people like us that live in town yeah. and you want to have 
a final home oh, for yes. a horse that had been good for you. That's right. And, and a lot of people don't realize uh, the attachment we have to these. When you say you want, well, I want to take care of take care of him or her. Long years, well, you could be looking at thirty years. <laughs> That's right. You are right. But you know what? The joy they bring us, it's worth. It. Yeah. <clears throat> nice horse right there. Real good horse. This horse is an amateur specialty class. Always the top class yeah. in any show. And it's Joe Paul. Mm -hmm. And it's Shane Porterfield. Boy, that's a full, full, good class of talented yes. horses. There's Joe Paul. Uh, that horse does it so easy. He does. And, and I mean, it no matter who the rider wears, it's open or right. amateur. Uh, Again, but just looking at this class, you see, and we see probably these age horses, six. Yeah. They could be six, they could be 16. Six, yeah. But I tell you, you gotta have to have a good one. You gotta have a good one. You're when, right. In, in this class, there's, there's no easy picking. This Top is a nice class of horses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you see a little bit of everything color wise. Yeah. I mean, there's flax man and tail, sorrel. Big blaze and light yeah. tail there. A sharp horse. Yes. Good. Well, every one of these horses are good. They're nice horses. Like it had a good crowd of people there mm -hmm. around the rail. Yep. Good horse, Shane. And Shane, I'm so glad to see Shane back in the show ring mm -hmm. and showing mm -hmm. and everything. And he's got several good ones. Yes. Top horses. Now, is he training some on his own, too? Yes, he's training. He got an Amazon trained horse. He got the boy over at Murfreesboro. Yes. Over there. Right. Now, there's a horse. He's, still, he's not young. He's got to yeah, be eight, nine, 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 ten. ten yeah. Up close uh -huh. to that. That's what I'm saying. These horses compete with young horses, you know? Mm-hmm. I just like everything so easy and smooth mm -hmm, yes. and everything else. And balance. Yeah. He's, he's long behind, long up front. What these That's horses bred for. Absolutely. It's smooth. He's a, a show horse. Mm -hmm. And totally comfortable on that side. Yes. I tell you, was, that was some good video right there. It was. Yes. It was very, very good shows. And just a, a taste of what's coming up. up. Remember That's this right. weekend, we got uh, uh, the tennis uh, benefit for the Shelbyville uh, Central High tennis team yeah. uh -huh. uh, over at uh, Belfast <coughs> on Friday night, and then shoot on down to Coleman. Look Coleman, yeah. And our friend Bob Roach will be there, yeah. both yeah. of them probably yeah. videoing too. You want to be uh, participating in that. So we've got a great opportunity, yeah. great weekend. Mike, I just want to take the time out to thank you for coming. Oh, and, thank you and, for offering me. You know, and my uh, wife thanks you for getting me out of the house. <laughs> she, she, educating she's everybody and telling mm -hmm. everybody what, you know, because everybody got a lot of questions and stuff like that, but they don't know where to get the answers from. So mm -hmm. I, I hope them listening to this right here, they can get some of the answers that they were looking for. Okay, well, I, what little, whatever little we can do. Yes. Do it and, uh, um, it's important to all of us, and I'm happy to do it. I, I, I really, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate your time, taking the time to come out here and, and hanging out with us and educating all of us around here. You know. So, well, it, it's my pleasure. We we can't uh, have more fun this, and, and appreciate you every week doing this. And uh, uh, Jerry for uh, Olson what a horse yes, for what sir. 23, 24 mm -hmm. years, years now. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a super a, job. Yeah, a pillar pillar of the business, and and uh, so informative, and we. Forget yeah. about how many people. But I will tell everybody, well, we'll tell everybody goodbye. <laughs>
a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, peace, start talking.